Good afternoon. Welcome to the Business Spotlight series. So I'm here uh, this afternoon with the uh, CEO of uh, Push Group, Steve Hyde. Afternoon, Steve. How are you doing? Good to, good to speak to you. Great. Thanks so much for making the time for us, Steve. Let's get straight into it. Steve, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about yourself? Um, I know you've got a business partner, uh, what you do, how you got started, uh, uh, and, and where, where the business is at right now. Yeah, sure. So um, Steve, myself, uh, and Ricky founded the business in 2007. And just before that, so I've been, I came out of university 30 odd years ago, went into the corporate world, uh, ended up bouncing around from companies like Pepsi, ended up at Disney as a sales director. And I realized myself, and I'm sure Sanjeev, you'll get a lot of this from other people that you work with. I suddenly realized in that corporate world that I needed to get out and I wanted to do something on my own. So um, I started, I read an article in The Economist about 2005, 2006 about the internet. And I realized that that was where I needed to be. I needed to be some, doing something in, in the internet Myself and Ricky um, in, invested in building up a web consulting business around about 2005, six. We eventually formed Push in 2007 on a shoestring budget. And you know what? For the first five years, we were doing like a lot of businesses do. I'm sure you see this and advise a lot of your clients. We were doing, we were trying to do everything. We were trying, in our world, we were trying to do web design. We were trying to do SEO. We were trying to do PPC, even trying to do email, you know, email marketing, the whole lot. Um, and, and it wasn't until about 2012, actually, when we uh, um, hired a coach that we realized that we needed to focus hard on one of those. And we focused on PPC. So that's the paid advertising or what other people will know as Google AdWords or Google Advertising. And that's when the business really took off. So we're now a business of about 70 odd people. Um, we do, um, a, we have a range of services now. We've actually managed to move away from just being purely focused on, on, on advertising, uh, but we now do all that, offer those other services. And we've worked with SMBs and challenger brands, really. Great, fantastic. and and. Um... What, what what makes you different? What, uh, what what's your the kind of unique proposition? Uh, how, how do you stand out from your you know, it, It's it's probably quite hard for some businesses to stand out in this space because there's a lot of people playing in the advertising or the digital marketing space. Um, I think and I, and this I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two, okay. And the first one I think is not unique, but it is important. So uh, the second one is unique. So we'll hold on to that. Um, so the first the first one is um, either through luck, good plan, good fortune. We have very very close relationships with the the top platforms, the top channels. So those are Google, obviously Microsoft, TikTok, Meta, uh, and to some extent Amazon. But but those those big platforms. So what does that mean? And that means that we get invited um, to, we have regular daily conversations with them. Uh, we get insights into new um, new betas that they're running, so new tests that they're running that might be appropriate for some of our clients. Uh, we'll have regular quarterly reviews with them at their head offices. We have people, we've had people in the past from, from people like Google who are on our board at Push. So we have a lot of insight and we're, we're very lucky because we're in a, in a, in a small percentage, there's probably only a handful of about 10 agencies in the UK that have got that level of access and we're one of them. So that's the first one. That doesn't make us unique because there, as I said, there are other agencies out there um, that work in that space, people like Brain Labs and Crowd and Found and so on. What we do have is, and this is this is important, is, is that the way that the market is going, you probably see this yourself, is that you have you have you have agencies that can come in and do and do execute for you so that they'll take your campaign and deliver results for you but increasingly what we're finding is that business is out there they don't want just an agency just to do and get them the results they also want to learn themselves they want to get coached themselves on how to do stuff so that they can become more proficient in the future so the big bit that makes us different 
is that we act um, not just as deliverers and executioners, if you like, but we also teach, so we train people how to run campaigns themselves. Uh, and we also um, can consult and coach people how to build their businesses uh, on the back of digital. All right, a bit like me, you leave leave them with an embedded capability and and uh, the, the confidence to go out about it. Yeah, exactly. You don't. You, yeah, it is. It is that kind of model. It's not. It's not. It's not the sort of model where you just say, right, you keep out of it and just tell us what results you want. We'll just do it for you. We will work with someone wherever they and they may want eventually to be fully self reliant on on driving their own um, their own campaigns. Great, fantastic. So, so Steve, what's the mission? What's the push group mission? What's your mission? What do you well, on a personal level? Um, I mean, I, I think that question itself, the mission question, I've genuinely always found that really hard to answer. You know, honestly, I know, I know, I've, you know, probably like you, I've got a business background. I've read loads of business books. If I point them out, you know, and I've you know, read this start with why and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and I'm regularly listening to podcasts and business podcasts. Um, we have re, um, we have had in the past, we've had a very, very clear vision. So at one stage, and I'm, I'm going to reflect on this, one stage, our, our vision was to be Google's most respected global partner. Now, that was a vision that we put in place about four years ago. Mm. And we delivered on that vision uh, to the extent that we became the most awarded European agency for Google um, through 2016, 17, 18, 19. And now we're getting awards from Microsoft. Mm. But right now, if you said to me, Steve, what is your mission right now? We are going through a change. So we are at the landscape that we're in is changing very rapidly, um, which will probably lead on to another question. But it's changing and we are ourselves as an agency is going to be a lot of disruption in the market and we're repositioning ourselves um to to make the most of that change so um, yeah, that would sound like i've ducked the question i haven't quite that's all right can't articulate it in in simplicity without going into quite a bit of detail about how the market has changed so much no that's uh, that's okay uh, I, I think you're right uh with with uh uh, what's happening in the technology, you know, AI and chat GPT and so on. The, the, the world is about to kind of uh, change in a, in a very significant way, the space space you're in. So um, I guess I guess it's about kind of uh, looking at how you how you le leverage that to to uh, to do do the things you do best. Ajib is going to be a massive change. Um, I, I bet if you and I could drive around in a taxi, and, and and then over the two weeks and speak to a hundred different agencies, mm. I'm not sure enough of them realize how big it's going to impact them. So when we, you know, when we've been on stage with Google and talking to talking to other agencies, mm. Google themselves predicted that a lot of agencies will go out of business. Um, what we're going to see with AI, if you think about, you know, I, we're probably sort of similar ages, but if you think about what we've seen in business over the last, say, 30 years, um, the impact of social and mobile, you know, social and mobiles on business or marketing were pretty big, but AI is going to have a bigger impact. It's going to be the biggest thing to affect marketing since mm -hmm. the internet was invented. It's going to be way bigger than social and its impact, which in itself you think so bigger than Meta and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that. It's going to be yeah. way bigger than, than, you know, the mobile, you know, how mobile. Yeah. So and be... that, that requires a lot of imagination, doesn't it, to think about how, how big that might be. Uh, so It's enormous. And there, there are numbers out there where the value of the internet, global value of the internet, um, people are saying that because of AI, it could increase by a factor of five or tenfold within a very short space of time. So, um, yeah, it's really big and we're gearing up for a lot of change coming uh and, and trying to get ahead of that change as well interesting space steve could you um could you uh, share a little bit about your kind of um journey as a business owner as an entrepreneur today you know what 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 are the um, biggest challenges that that you faced and overcame uh yeah it'd be good to kind of get a sense of that i mean a lot of them um in you know 17 years but probably 
I, I think one of the ones that I, I look back on on a personal level is, you know, I started a business. So I left left the world of corporate and started a business. Um, and my business partner, Ricky, and, and I had basically had started families at the same time. So we were both building a business and starting, you know, independent the family so his kids are now like 16 and 14 and my kids are 15 and 12 but that's I know I really empathize and sympathize with anyone that goes through that that stage where they've actually got the business going and they've just got it started almost the same time as their family that was a big challenge for us on a personal level because you're battling with finances and trying to get everything going together um I think um I think I've really reflected on the fact that when you start, you're a bit cash strapped. I mean, most a lot of businesses are, and it's re- you have to make some really tough decisions about the people that you take on. Um, sometimes you're taking on people because you can just about to afford to take them on. Um, and I think if I could go back in time, I'd probably say try and get the very just always take on the best people you possibly can. Um, things that we've done right, you know, would be we built a really strong strong culture uh, uh, push uh, so we we built um, we've got a lot of loyalty from customers and clients but that's driven really by a lot of loyalty from the team the, the actual the team that work for us so uh, and that's come from Ricky and I just building a business where we wanted to tr- and it sounds cliche but treat our team how we would want to be treated so giving you know people the right levels of holiday and letting them you know when when family members have been ill giving them time off just treating them well, like adults, keeping them in well informed, always and, and being available, not being, you know, that stereotypical boss that, that is disconnected and doesn't really care about their their employees. We're not like that at all. Great. I mean that 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 resonates so much with me with the work I do. Time, time, team, and money. If I kind of um, uh, um, uh, sum them up, are probably the three three critical challenges every uh, uh, business that we work with faces in some way, shape, or form. So you've just uh, you've just reflected that uh, really good. Are there any other kind of um, key lessons learned? What uh, one or two things that that stand out for you in that seventeen year old journey? People will think on I've you've teed me up. But I mean, I'm on record of you know before we've we've spoken of saying get a coach. You know, um, we have, we've had you know coaches along the journey. We've never not you know since we we turned the business around in a period of two in 2012 when we took on our first coach. Um, we've always had coaches in place um, because you need to be challenged. You need to you need you need you need a fresh pair of eyes, often from outside industries. And one thing I found actually. It varies. Sometimes you'll go with a coach that's a more of an industry specialist, and sometimes that's really useful. And then you it's a bit like a bit like sports. And then sometimes you need to switch the kind of coach that you need to get on someone that's maybe not an industry specialist, that's maybe a growth, you know, more about rapid growth, and they challenge you in a different way. So yeah, co- getting a coach is really vital. Being focused is very important. Um, and uh, I think a thing that we're we're about to you know rework ourselves a lot of is is being making sure that the the reason that you really are different and unique and strong is is clear in the marketplace because it isn't always the case. Really like that, fantastic. So uh, don't be afraid to ask for help and uh, uh, and uh, you know re- really find your find a niche. Excellent, Steve. Um, what 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 does I mean, we chatted a bit about that. What, what does the future look like for 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 push and 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 also you you personally? What's what's on the horizon? Yeah. So I mean, firstly, um, the the future is very exciting. It, it's uh, we're in a space which is uh, where there's a lot of a um, lot of change, and we're on the right side of a lot of that change. Fortunately, we're we're moving into a, a world where we're having to be a lot more creative with our um, with our output because it's not just about you think about it <clears throat> so it's not just about text ads now a lot more about video it's about images uh, we're working with ai a lot to generate uh, images and, cre- and creatives as well so that in itself is exciting um, we're using um, ai to drive a lot of efficiencies in the way that we work with our clients so that we 
can we can work with a lot of smaller clients now on a lot lower budgets because of the technology that we're employing. So in the past, the barriers to entry for small businesses were quite high working with an agency. Now, because of the some of the work we've done with with the likes of Google, we've managed to sort of bring that to become a lot, a lot more available. And that's the, the one of the quickest parts of our growing parts of our business. For me personally, no, the question should be, you know, like, you know, where do you go? How long do you do this? I'm really enjoying what I'm doing at the moment. Um, you know, even though I'm in my, I'm easily into my 50s, um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I am enjoying, you know, traveling around, you know, not just the UK, but the world, meeting other businesses. Um, so for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to enjoy the ride um, for, the, for the time being. Um, um, and my le the sort of legacy that I want to have with business is, you know, this is kind of maybe this is the closest thing to get to your mission question is um, I just want to build a great place to work where people are, you know, proud, they enjoy working there, and um, it's a place that people can come and grow and, you know, enjoy what they do. So that, that to me is a more important legacy than, than, than anything else. Sounds, uh, sounds good to me. Um... And uh, if I were to ask you, what, what do you see as the key to your, your success going forward? More of, uh, uh, you know, the strategy and tools you've used in the past? Or is there any, anything else that you need to pay attention to? Um, I, as I said about artificial intelligence, <clears throat> I think it's absolutely enormous. And we are, you know, we've been using AI in our own platforms, our own technology platforms to help manage campaigns for um, for, for clients. But that's going to be very important. Um, we have gone into other international markets. We, we would go into, to, we've been into, you've gone into Dubai, we've gone into, into uh, parts of Europe, and we spend a lot of, of money outside of the UK. Um, but I think uh, the next big area where we're starting to deliver now both virtually and person to person is we're doing a lot of training so we're training um either small businesses um or indeed you know much bigger ones on how to manage campaigns or set up campaigns on google on meta on tiktok on microsoft on amazon right. so, on. so we're do doing a lot of training so we just had a team come back last week from from dallas um, and we're doing some online training to a team in India next week. So training is a big area. So you're becoming an educator in your in your in your marketplace as well. All right, fantastic. Um, uh, Steve, Steve um, what what advice would you give to a, anybody who's kind of uh, got an emerging business that they want to they want to scale up? Uh, you, you've you've shared quite a few uh, things. Is there anything else that you you want to share? Yeah. Um, the biggest one of the biggest things we've discovered over the years, um, and I could go on about this for a long while, and I'll try not to, but but almost the the, the biggest factor in success in digital marketing is trying the new stuff as it comes along as quickly as possible. Let me explain that. So if you can remember back to say 2005 2006 the early days of google advertising um let's say you and i were running a business building conservatories you know in whatever in surrey and we had two showrooms if we'd have been the early player on google advertising in that era we'd have done very well and eventually what happens is other people start coming into that marketplace and, and, and all, all of your competitors start going on to Google advertising. And then there's the next thing to be getting onto. It might then have been, you know, it might have been Facebook advertising or it might have been, um, you know, display advertising through Google or so on. But the point is, is that if you stand back and you're always waiting for, you know, other, to see what other people are doing, you'll miss the chance to get ahead of them. And once you do get ahead, you get this kind of virtual sort of cycle where you're constantly keep keeping ahead. So we've got the data that shows that the quicker the companies jump on new technology and new approaches, mm. the more likely they are to be successful. And what that does over time is it is it, it means your cost of acquiring 
a new client is kept lower than your competition. So you can afford to grow. More. You can just afford to throw more money at, at, at yeah. those clients. So that's the biggest thing I think I've learned over you know nearly two decades now. So the latest one, obviously, is probably, for, and it's not always relevant to all businesses, but probably either sat within TikTok um, or with ChatGPT and what, what's happening there. So I'd encourage businesses to look very hard at those uh, those kinds of platforms and think about what it means for them. And if they don't know, they should go out and reach out for help from someone. If they look at either of those and think, is this for me? What should I be doing? They should definitely reach out for help. Early adopt, be early adopters, embrace the technology. Fantastic. Steve, um, um, just just to just to wrap up, um, what's what's the best advice you could give uh, to your uh, 21 year old 25 year old self it would be to start you know to to to, i mean probably now i would might even say don't go to university i mean right now i mean seriously um i mean i've got a son who's 15 and uh is goes to a very good school um and i'm sure he'll want to go to university but there is a real question now about whether or not that is the right thing to do i went to university but I would say um, probably try and get into trying to get into um, whatever is new now um, and, and learn and then go and start your own business. That's what that's what I would have encouraged myself. With. I personally spent too long in corporations. I did you know university, then I did 10, 12 years in corporations. I should have recognized who I was earlier on, which was, you know. A guy that jumps out of a cl- jumps off a cliff and tries to build a plane on the way down. It was a classic entrepreneur. I used to get told, literally told off uh, some of the companies I worked at because I was, you know, a bit didn't toe the line. And so, yeah, my advice, if I was speaking to myself, would be get a bit of experience, but quickly find your own business and, and do it in a new field. What's whatever's coming in that's new. I I second that. You know, I've got a very very similar experience, and I I'd be saying just go for it, back yourself, get a mentor, just get just get stuck in. Yeah, you you got time at that age to um uh, uh experiment, uh, make mistakes, learn, uh and and really find find you know the thing that uh, uh that that fuels your fire and uh, uh you can get great at. So yeah, good good, good advice, Steve. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed that. Um, if somebody wants to connect with you or find out more uh, about Push, what's the best way? So um, the best way is to, you know, they can very well use my own email, which is obviously the domain name is pushgroup.co.uk. And it's just steve at pushgroup.co.uk. Or if they go on to our website, there are forms there they can leave. Uh, inquiry or they can go on to LinkedIn and just look go, just Google Stephen Hyde at push group uh, it's easier to use push group because we are a group of companies now amazing Steve thanks very much for your time awesome,